I talked last week about the blessings of a positive attitude, and today I, I want to talk about positive distraction. Because there are some distractions that are positive. But first, uh, let, let's start by defini uh, defining what, what does it mean distraction or distracting. To be distracted means to have the attention diverted. Also, uh, another definition is render incapable of behaving in a normal manner. So when we're distracted, we're not able to, to, to do things in a nor normal manner. Uh, I, I was here yesterday, I, I was uh, trying, I, I, I didn't try much, but I was trying to help someone to find a set of keys. <laughs> and if you're there, you must be laughing now. <laughs> And, uh, and uh, you know, I hate when I lose keys. And when you lose keys in a church, it's, it's really, you know, you, you go everywhere, under the pews, in the pulpit, and the, everywhere. It was, it was quite a journey of, uh, of uh, distraction, distracting from everything. Well, but I know if you've lost your keys, uh, you know what I mean. You, you just forget about everything, and now you have this distraction of finding something. Now the verse for today, it's in Luke chapter 19 and verse 10. And today's verse uh, is the following, For the Son of Man came to seek and to save which was lost. For the Son of Man came to seek and save which was lost. So Jesus Christ was on a mission. And His mission wasn't just to save the lost, but it was to seek first and then save them. And when you seek, it's because you know that there is some work you need to do. And when you seek something, you're distracted from, distracted from everything else in order to focus your attention in the things that you seek. Some of you here that went through seasons of addiction in your life, if you needed a drug or alcohol or cigarettes, whatever your addiction, you know that if you needed that substance, if you needed that or gambling or whatever was your addiction, you will be distracted from everything else. To focus just on that simple goal and objective of getting what you need for your personal satisfaction. Now Jesus Christ came to this world and he got distracted from the things of the world to get focused on this simple mission. Simple in essence, but complicated as, as he started to uh, show the world how to do it and show it also to us generations after the church that we are here called with the same mission. We are called also to seek and save those that are lost. You were not called to the church or to be part of God's kingdom just to enjoy the ride with the hope that when you die you go to heaven. There's a higher mission and our mission is exactly the same as Jesus Christ, to seek and to save what which was lost. Now according to statistics, we have now in the world 7 billion people. There's 7 billion people in the world alive today. Uh, take, take our leave, but it's about 7 billion. From those 7 billion, 2 billion say they are Christian. 2 billion. That's 2,000 million. And, and it's a lot of people. Well, I'm not saying that they're all Christian. Those are the people that when they ask, what is your religion? They'll say, oh, I, I'm a Christian, or my family is Christian, or we're Christian. It's a lot of people. Now, even if, if this is true, and, and we have two million people that confess somehow that they are followers of Christ, we still have five billion people in the world today that are not Christian, or they never heard of Jesus Christ, they don't know what salvation is, so these 5 billion people are what God calls lost. And I don't know if you have an idea of how many people it's 5 billion. It's a lot of people. Let me just give you an illustration. If you put those people 
hand to hand or at a distance where they can touch each other and we start to line them up and we start here in Montreal, you know what? We can go across the ocean to Europe. It's a lot of people, eh? But it doesn't stop there. We will go and continue to China. And it wouldn't stop there because they will cross the ocean to uh, Vancouver and they will continue all the way across Canada here to Montreal. That's a lot of, that's a lot of people, right? But, and you know what? And it will continue. Because you could do literally, uh, uh, the, the distance will be around the earth, not one time, 10 times? 20 times? Anyone knows? 34 times. So if, you, if you're about to put people around the, the planet earth, you could have 34 turns around the globe of people, 5 billion people that are lost. So if you, if you line them up, 5 billion people. It's a lot of people. Do you know any, any of these people right here in Montreal? Or where you live here on the South Shore? It's a lot of people that are lost. And again, you know, we lose stuff. We age. I tend to lose my car keys also more often. <laughs> and I, I lost my wife. Have you seen my keys? <laughs> and uh, it's the first person I asked. And, uh, and I asked for help. I don't know if you ever lost a car. A car. <laughs> it happened to me. Leave the car in the parking lot in the mall. And, uh, and after I need to go back to the car, and I start thinking, when did I leave the car? <laughs> and I exit through the bay, and I look around, no, it's not here. <laughs> and I go to Sears, no, it's not here. Did it ever happen to you? Oh, it's, it's terrible. You know, losing, losing keys is bad, but you lose your car. Man. <laughs> so, we, we lose a lot of things. I don't know if you ever lost a child. That's a terrible experience. When you lift your eyes and you're looking for your kid and your child is not there. We, had, we once lost one of our kids and uh, he was still a baby. And we, we were at the restaurant and uh, enjoying the meal. And we looked to the side and he's not there. And uh, it was a big shopping mall so we went running uh, all the way through the, the shopping mall and they know in our mind we start thinking what happened, someone kidnapped our kid, you know, he's in the street, he's lost, and when we lose a child, I'm telling you, we forget about everything, we panic, because we, we need to find that child. Uh, eventually he was on the first floor, he saw a, a toy store and he was playing with the toys. <laughs> but, uh, but, but, you know, I remember when I was looking for my kid, you know, I have three kids. It's not that you, you lose one of your children and you're trying to find your child and if you have three kids, uh, you stop and you say, well, I still have two. <laughs> <laughs> Will you do that? <clears throat> I still have two kids, so uh, let me just relax. I've lost one, but, uh, you know, I have... <laughs> I still have a plan, or if it's like uh, Paul and Anne with, with nine kids, you know, they can we'll say, oh, uh, well, we lost one, we still have eight. <laughs> so, big thing. <laughs> Just one more. We don't do that. When we lose a child, we forget about everything. And, and this is what I want to uh, tell you. This is a distraction. Now, when you lose something, this becomes a distraction. And in the sense that I want to share this message with you, this is the most positive distraction that you can have. It's when you're trying to find someone that, that is lost. As I, I was reading through some statistics, I concluded that churches in North America are not particularly growing that much. There's people that move from one church to another church.
But those are the ones that say they're Christian. So in fact, churches are may grow, but God's kingdom isn't. And we need to do something about it. Now, in, uh, in Luke chapter 15, Jesus gave an illustration and, and He showed three aspects of, of, uh, of what it means to seek the lost. And um, some people say it's three different parables. I think it's just one with three different uh, perspectives. And He talked first about the lost sheep then he talked about the lost, the lost coin, and, and he ends up by talking about the lost son. Remember what was his mission? He came to seek and save, which was lost. But people had a hard time to understanding the concept, concept as we do have today as a church. We have a hard time to understand that God wants to use us to shorten that line that goes 35 times across the ocean that circles the planet, the globe, 34 times. God wants to use us to shorten that line. To seek those that are lost and to bring them into the Father's house. That's our mission. You see, as a church, we can fail our mission completely. And today we have churches that are more like social clubs, where we have these snobs, these people that, you know, if you don't dress like them, if you don't talk like them, if you don't sing the songs that they sing, you know, you're not saved. You're not part of the group. We need to break with this mentality and understand that we receive the mission from Jesus Christ. Amen. And Jesus Christ sent us. And He said, as the Father sent me, I am sending you. So, let's uh, briefly think about this parable. The lost sheep. And in, in the minds of people, they always think about this image of, of the shepherd bringing the lost sheep home. And uh, uh, what Jesus was sharing was a story of a shepherd that had a flock of a hundred. And one of the sheep got lost, so he asked someone to take care of the ninety-nine, and he went to get the lost sheep. But the story wasn't just about the flock and one of the sheep of the flock. The story was a, an illustration and God wanted to uh, share His heart with us. How He is always seeking the lost. You see, in the world there's tons of people, there's millions of people that are lost. Those are the ones we need to seek. I know that in the minds of people they think, well, uh, we. This is why the church has a pastor, and if someone doesn't come to church on Sunday, the pastor needs to call that person because that's the lost sheep. Is it? Who's the lost sheep? You know, in Jesus' story, the lost sheep is... That, well, first he was talking about Israel. That was the illustration. He wasn't necessarily talking about church. But also he said, I have other sheep that, that don't belong to this flock, and I'm gathering them also, which is you and me, the ones that are not Jewish. We're not part of Israel. I know I have Jewish uh, heritage, and, and I come from a, a, a Jewish uh, a line or family, but I'm not Jewish. And most of you are not Jewish. But when Jesus is talking about the flock, He's talking about people in general, and how the Good Shepherd, is concerned to seek and find the lost. So when we talk about the lost, it's not the person uh, or the lost sheep. It's not the person that used to come to church and doesn't come to church anymore. Because most likely this person will continue to consider himself or herself Christian. This is not a lost person. What we're called to do is to go through the world, in, in our workplaces, in our school, our family, people that we know, people that we come across, and we have this divine mission of sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ, of shortening the line, and help these people to put God first in their lives. And how can they do it? They need to look to you as the person that puts God first. They need to recognize, to acknowledge God's presence in your life. It's not the fact that you come to church that makes you a Christian. It's your lifestyle. It's the way you act. It's what you do. It's your priorities.
But the distractions of the world, the negative distractions, can sidetrack you from the mission God gave you to seek and found which was lost. After talking about the lost sheep, he talked about the lost, the lost coin, about a woman that, uh, that uh, lost one of uh, uh, her coins. And I, I don't want to go into details because it wasn't her savings. This had to do with the tiara, a traditional uh, uh, the marriage covenant that they had in the house. I don't want to tell you what, what it's all about. But in that tiara, a lost coin was something terrible. So this woman had to find the lost coin. And she started to clean the house, to turn the house upside down, as we do when we lose something. And, and she was distracted from everything. And the only thing she was allowed to do, and she thought about it, was to have her friends to help her to find the lost coin. So, the, the way she related with these friends, these were specific people that were engaged in the mission to help her to find the lost coin. Again, Jesus Christ is not talking about money or a lost coin. He's trying to teach those people about the mission He had and the mission He entrusted His disciples to seek and found which was lost. So, uh, when, when you lose something in the house and you turn the house upside down, people may call you, but if, if it's your priority, you put your priority first. Someone can say, oh, you want to go out for a coffee? I'm sorry, I cannot go because I need to find something. And, uh, and then they will come and say, oh, you want to watch uh, soap opera with me or come to my house? No, I'm sorry, I cannot go and watch that soap opera because I'm on a mission. I need to find my lost coin. And uh, the best way to find stuff in a house is starting by cleaning your house. Right? So you, and it's a good opportunity you have to clean your house. If it's not clean, just do something. I'm just kidding. But, <laughs> but it's the best way. You don't find stuff by turning things around. People that turn things upside down uh, in order to try to find stuff, they'll end up with a big mess and they will not find it. So the, the way is to put things in place. So in order uh, to find the lost coin, this woman started to put things in place in her house. And this is very important. So there's a principle here that if you want to do God's mission, you need to start with your house. You need to put your house in order. And finally, we have the famous, on this chapter, we have the famous parable of the lost son, the prodigal son. The son that decided to go to a foreign land and took his father's uh, muddy part of uh, the part of the heritage that belonged to him after his father's will die, but he, he asked for the money, he spent everything, and he ended up sleeping with pigs. And taking care and, and eating, eating with, with, uh, with pigs. And as he was in this situation, he realized he was lost, and he decided to return to the father's house. And this one, yes, he talks about that person, which we, in church, in our language, we call the backslider. That person that once was in the house and then uh, was lost. By the way, by the fact that you come to church, doesn't mean that you are saved. You need to endure till the end. You're not saved and once saved, saved forever. No, you need to keep your salvation. And in order to keep your salvation, there's, uh, there's things you need to change in your life, which are not hard to change, but you need to shape your life with God's plan. So, but the, the, the prodigal son was away and the father was waiting for him to come back. So he came back and the father embraced him. And it's a, it's a beautiful story. We can see this story from many angles. But let me just uh, tell that when you lose a child, or when, when one of your kids is not walking in God's ways, when one of your children is doing stuff that they shouldn't, or you have a, a child in jail, or, or on drugs, or all, all these things, your heart still beats for that, that child. It, 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 it is still your child, and you're waiting for that person. So Jesus Christ was giving these illustrations to show 
his disciples the importance of seeking which was lost. Now, um, as, we, as we look into those uh, uh, statistics about North America, every year uh, there are 3,000 churches that close. Or, uh, let me explain better, not 3,000, a little bit more. There's new churches that open and churches that close. And from, the numbers from the United States and Canada show that every year, on, on the general view of things, uh, uh, the Christianity loses 3,000 churches a year. Okay? It's a lot. And of course, we have churches now of 40,000, 20,000. So it's not that those people were lost, but they went from a church to another church. So it's not necessarily bad. But as we look to the world today, it's not that we're seeing the line shortening. It's not that we're in a season like in the 90s, in which all the churches were booming and uh, churches were full of people and people will come to, to Jesus at all times. And we had these huge crusades with uh, Billy Graham and with um, uh, uh, Benny Hinn and all these names and different flavors in Christianity. And people were just coming to these events and arenas were packed all over the place. And there were uh, five or six TV channels and all churches were on TV and radio and all these things. This wasn't too long ago. But right now we live in a season in which people are so distracted. Christians are so distracted. And churches begin to look like social clubs. And when the church loses sight of the mission, it's about to close. When we do things in church, just, you know, we do musicals or whatever, and the goal is to entertain the crowd, we do it. Those churches are about to close in a few years. The only way we get God's blessing in what we do as a church, it's when we distract it from everything else, and we focus in doing God's will, in putting Jesus first. In putting God first. When you put God first, you have this mission of seeking those that are that are lost. And um, in Matthew six thirty three, Jesus said, "But seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you." And He was talking about the things of the world, you no know, clothes, uh, money, all the things of the world. That that was what Jesus was saying. He was saying, "You know, your Father in heaven will give you those things." But seek first. Notice it, it doesn't say seek only. Some Christians are so fanatical. I hate fanatical people. I'm sorry. I don't hate the people. I hate the attitude. Fanatical people are terrible. And there's people that are always ready to correct you. Always ready. You know, I'm a pastor. And there's people that come and say, Oh, you know, uh, this is not of God. And that's not of God. And this is not of God. Who are you to say what's of God and what's not of God? Do the mission. Usually fanatical people, instead of bringing people to the church, they drive people out of the church. If you meet fanatical people, they can talk about Jesus and God and the Lord, but everyone around them leaves, leaves the church. Because at a point they say, I don't want to be like this man, I don't want to be like this woman. They, they just disappear. It's, it's, it's a plane. But when you put Jesus first, your mission, it's not to talk about the church, your mission is to seek and save, which was lost. You see, Jesus didn't came to the world to start a religion. He came to this world in a mission. And we don't have much time. We need to shorten that line. He said, seek first, not seek only. So there's things that you see. You know, you seek a better job. You seek better opportunities. You seek things of this world. It, it's not that God will condemn you. However, you need to seek first. His kingdom and His righteousness. I do this church. And uh, as we think about these things, let me also share this, this scripture. Psalm uh, 37 verse 4. Delight yourself in the Lord. Or better, delight yourself also in the Lord. 
and He shall give you the desires of your heart. We all have desires in our heart. But it doesn't say, delight yourself only in the Lord. But it says, delight yourself also in the Lord. So that there are things in which you delight yourself. I don't know what, what, what are these things. We are all different. There are things we appreciate and we delight. And we delight in doing certain things and being with people and doing, uh, uh, you know, in traveling, whatever you delight yourself. There's stuff you like doing. It's music. It's playing an instrument. It's, a, it's a, a, you know, building something. It's, it's a, a fixing your car. Whatever gives you pleasure. God doesn't say stop doing so. But He said, delight yourself also in me. And I will give you the deep desires your heart. How do you delight yourself in the Lord? You need to get to know Him. You see, we're not a, a social club. This church is here, and, and the name of the church is Community Church, not because of the community we have inside, but because of the community we have outside. See, our mission is to seek and say which was lost. When we do a Bible school, it's not to get knowledge, it's to, to be equipped to do the work that we were called to do. Our mission is to seek and save, which was lost. This is what makes South Shore Community Church a great church. And I, I want to just, you know, show my appreciation to all of you that work with children, to kids in the park. Great ministry that happens here every Wednesday. Great ministry is about to start. And we have uh, several of you that come here and you're engaged in this activity of seeking those kids. And there's all sorts of creative ideas. Banana split, uh, ice creams and, uh, and uh, 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 paper gliders, uh, contest, and all sorts of different ideas and things that are being done. And, uh, and when I, I thought there's no more ideas, then I'll have uh, Anne or Don coming to me. And here, this is what we have to do. We have the firefighters. And we have to do this. And they're so excited. And the excitement is great because they're seeking those that are lost. We have a group of people now downstairs and we're doing a, a children's service downstairs. It starts at 10.30 and they do present worship and they have uh, uh, things that specifically to, uh, uh, oriented for these children. Because we want to make sure that they're not lost. See, we have activities like sharing. Many of you here are coming on Saturdays. And, and during the week to bring supplies. And there's about 70, sometimes 80 people that come here to church to get a bag of food or to drink a, a cup of coffee. But it's not just about the food and the coffee. We have Talina and Bernard and all the team that are working with them. They are giving their lives to seek and save which was lost. And this church is full of activity. Now it's so hard to get a room in this church. Just from the community, from the AA and Alabama groups, according to them, not to me, we have more than 400 people that are coming to our building every week, either here or the White House, 400 people that are coming regularly to this building, seeking help to get rid of their addiction. And, and, and I believe that some of them will start coming also to our church. See, it's easy to come up to church on Sunday and criticize everything and everybody. And there's also a group of uh, people here that criticizes the church. It's normal, it's a, a human organization. It's normal that people criticize. But if you criticize and you never bring anyone to church, let me tell you, you're missing the point. Our mission is to seek and say which was lost. It's not to build a social club. You know, we, we even have now Zumba classes here at the church. And you ask me, what is this Zumba? Zumba is like an aerobic dance. So there's one of the neighbors that has a, a dance school and uh, we thought, uh, and they asked us to, to use up our basement. And now we have, we have a group of people that come and do gymnastics here at the church. And you might say, oh, that's not holy. Listen, are you so holy that you're not interested in diminishing that light? Are you so holy that you want to, you know, to do a social club that is always 
thinking about the church and the church and the church. It's not about the church, folks. It's about God, about Jesus Christ, and bringing the lost, shortening the line, being distracted from the things of the world because we are on a mission, and we are on a mission of bringing the lost. When you are on that mission, you're not bothered by anything or anyone. People can tell you anything, but you are, you are on a mission, you don't care. <laughs> Commitment, it's also sometimes inconvenience. When you're committed to the mission, it's also inconvenient. It means that you could stay at home, you know, just watching TV, but you say, I cannot stay at home. I need to do something. I need to do something. I need to seek and save which was lost. It was so comfy today in bed. <laughs> Wasn't it? Yes. <laughs> and you could, you know, just do that, those prayers, oh Lord, keep us comfy, keep us happy in our bed, oh Lord, and bless us. And some people have these self-centered, selfish prayers. And they're so focused in the church when God didn't call us to be focused in the church. God called us to be focused on a mission. And the mission is called the Great Commission. Go throughout the world and make disciples of all nations. Now the church is here to equip you to make the disciples. The church is here, of course, to have different kinds of activities. But if you think about church, just the place, the physical place where you like to be on Sunday and you think it's yours, let me tell you, that you're about to lose it. Because your mission is, is to seek and save which was lost. This was the, our verse for today. And I hope uh, you understand that in order to do so, we need vision, we need plans, we need to know how to do it. And the God-sized vision requires a Christ-like distraction. He was so distracted. You know, once he was preaching in this place and his mom heard that it has been two or three days he doesn't leave because he's just preaching the gospel and going here and healing the people and, and so she comes with uh, her other children because you know Mary had other kids and the Bible says they were going to that place to bring Jesus home by force because mom wanted to force him to eat <laughs> moms are like this What did you eat today? Uh, I was distracted with the computer. <laughs> I was distracted watching TV. You need to eat. So moms are like this. Jesus had a mom. And mom was, wor was worried. And in front of everybody, Jesus rebuked his mom because he, not because he wanted to offend Mary, but he wanted to tell my food is to do the will of the Father. It's not that he didn't like to eat. In fact, he was famous for eating and drinking with sinners. <laughs> so it's not about food, but it's about the mission. When you're in the mission, you forget about everything. You're distracted from food, you're distracted from things, you know, you're distracted from everything. If it ever happened to you, you get to the end of the day, you say, I didn't eat. It happens a lot to me. Especially when I'm working, uh, you know, in the things of God. Sometimes I get to the end of the day, and I think, I didn't eat. Or, if I had to take medication, uh, I didn't take medication. <laughs> because, you know, when you're focused in doing God's plan for your life, you're distracted with that. Everything else loses sense. Because you know you're a man or a woman on a mission to seek and save, which was lost. So we need this kind of distraction. And again, our verse for today, for the Son of Man came to seek and to save, which was lost. Let us all stand. May you ask the present worship team to come. And I'd like to have a word of prayer with the church.